and just go ahead and just uh, begin. Now, when you are looking at uh, getting on stage and, and, and looking to be speaking, now, the, one of the first things that you have to realize is what are the different kinds of stages that you can be on? Now, depending on that will depend upon also, you know, uh, the stuff that we're going to be talking about later, um, you may have to change some of your things around depending on that. So most people think of, of, of when they are speaking on stage that this is going to be where they get paid to be uh, to to speak. That's probably one of the most uh, common ways that people uh, go on stage. Say maybe they're saying, "Hey, hey, Jason, I, I want to give this talk in front of your group of people, and my fee is five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars." So that is the first way of doing. Uh, uh, whenever you are going to be speaking, you get paid to to speak. Now, there's there's going to be other times when you're you, when you're actually are going to be paying them for you to speak. So when you're when you're paying to speak, um, oftentimes you will be you will be able to uh, to do a sale where you tell people to go to the back of the room to buy your your program, your product, your service, or whatever. Now, in this speaking industry, that is known as a bookstore. So uh, when they, and it doesn't mean you're selling a book. But the, but the, originally it was that way, but now uh, in today's book, the thing, you could be selling uh, courses, you could be selling coaching programs, you could be selling you know whatever it is. But just be aware that in the industry they they, they call when somebody goes to the back of the room a bookstore. Okay. Now you, you may also pay to speak, um, but you're going to but you're going to be splitting uh, the, the sales. Uh, 50, 50, 60, 40, or, you know, whatever it is, you're going to be splitting the sales of the back of the room with the host. That is another that is another type of thing that you can do. There's also going to be times when you could actually uh, go to somebody's stage and you're going to be speaking for free. And those are the times when you could be, uh, where you can actually keep all the proceeds. Okay. An example of that, I've spoken on quite a few stages uh, where I was speaking for free. Okay, somebody just... You wanted to come in. And by doing that, that's going to be like, say, if you're going to go speak at the Chamber of Commerce or you're going to be uh, uh, speaking at a, a like I when I was in real estate, I spoke at quite a few times at uh, RIA meetings, real estate investor investor club meetings. So there are times when you're going to be uh, uh, doing that where, where you are free to speak or are free to it uh, to to speak. But you can but you can sell from the back of the room. Now, sometimes that sale means that you can keep everything, and sometimes that sale could mean that you're going to be splitting the, that profit with the uh, with the host. Again, you you, you always have to look whenever you're uh, whenever you're speaking. Yes, you know, is it going to cost me anything? And then, can I sell from the room? And if I can't sell from the room, do I have, do you have to negotiate a a percentage going to the host? Now, there are also going to be times when you're going to be able to uh, speak for free, but you can't, but you cannot sell. Because they did, they would they didn't want all, uh, their people all being sold to. In those cases, uh, you need to find out can you actually uh, collect their uh, their information, like you know their business card, or they fill out a form or something like that, and then you put them on a a, a nurture list where you're either emailing them or you actually schedule you know you call them to schedule appointments or you have somebody on your team to schedule appointments. So you so whenever you're speaking, you always have to keep that in mind. And the reason I'm saying that is whenever you're coming up with one of one or two of your things that we're going to be talking about here in a moment, uh, you may have to alter your uh, your uh, these items uh, because of that. For an example, if you have on say your speaker one sheet, you say I charge five thousand dollars to give this talk, and you're going to go go and you're about to go onto a stage where you can speak for free. You want to make sure that that is not on your uh, on your speaker one sheet. Now, what I want to do right now is I want to go actually uh, into some of the different things that you're going to be needing whenever you are uh, creating your media kit. Now, a media kit is going to be, I'm going to start uh, uh, taking notes here uh, on paper so that something I can give to you guys at the very end. So let me go ahead and share my screen again. I'm going to share screen one. And then I want to open up a new word file. Now, just out of curiosity, either between Gina or from Jason, do you see my control, my, um, 
fathom stuff up here on the top right hand corner of the screen? Uh, yeah, I see it. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can move it then. Move it somewhere else. Okay, so I'm gonna put there's no spacing, and I'm gonna say 18. So one of the first things that when you're when, when you're putting together a speaker uh, or a speaker media kit, one of the things that you want, want to do is create what's called a speaker bio. Now a speaker bio is basically just a one sheet of paper where you are where you are talking about yourself. So I'm going to show you a, an example of that by showing you uh, one of my speaker bios. Uh, so here, here is a bio that, that I wrote. Uh, I wrote, wrote it in Word, and then after I was done with it, I converted it to a PDF. Now, uh, if you please let me know in the chat, or just let me know if you do not know how to create a PDF, and I and I can add that into the uh, uh, into the lesson plan, or put a one if you do if you do know how to create a PDF from a Word file. Yeah, definitely do. Definitely do. Okay. And and Jason, you you, you do as well. I'm sorry, I uh, left the room for a second. What'd you say? So do you know how to uh, uh, create a PDF file from a Word file? Uh, do not. No. Okay. So I'm glad I asked. So let me go ahead and um, go ahead and open up my uh, this file right here. And so uh, this is uh, this is my file. Now, whenever you are creating a PDF file, you're not saving it as a PDF. What you're actually doing is you're going to be printing it to a PDF. Okay. If you've got a newer computer, you, you will usually have uh, when you go, to, go down to the to the print, you will usually have uh, a Microsoft print to PDF. That's on on, on new uh, versions of, of Windows. That's that's kind of standard. If you don't, if this does not show up. The PDF user that I used for many, many years as a real estate agent was this one called uh, Cute PDF Writer. And what you would do in, in those particular cases is, is that you would want to go to what is a place that's called cutepdf.com. And then you want to, uh, and this is free. You want to make sure that you get the right one. That's that's going to be for you, either using Windows or you're or you're using PC. Um, so the, this is this is free. I've used it for years. It's been my uh, my go to one. This uh, the computer that I'm on right now. I bought a little more than a year ago, and it had the, and it had the um, uh, and, and it had the one that that came with the, the newer versions of Windows. So you, uh, you can use either one. And what's going to happen is once I choose that, I'm going to hit the print button. I, a pop-up will come up. I always have things uh, uh, end up on my desktop, so that, and then I can move it to whichever folder that I want. You can call it whatever. Just call it uh, M and J. It doesn't really, okay, it doesn't really matter what you call it. I, I will hit save. And if I were to go here and minimize this, you will see MMK I, I just showed up. And now I can open that up. And now I'm now I'm in the MN, uh, MNK uh, file, so that's my PDF file. Okay, so it's, it, it is a pretty easy process, and and once you get used to it, it's uh, it's you know, it's really easy. But the thing is, when you, whenever you send, like say, a host a uh, your bio, okay, and uh, Gina says PDF995.com. I think I used them about 10, 15 years ago. Um, but the thing is, I, I, Jason, whenever you send a file to somebody, you you definitely want to make sure that it's not editable. Okay, so that's why you want to that's why you want to have all of these things uh, as PDFs. And the other way that you can do it is you can have them as as a, as an image file. But most people are, are pretty used to uh, PDFs. So whenever you're writing your bio, uh, the bio this is there's basically there's two kinds of bios that you're going to be writing. This bio here is, is my long form bio. It just tells me uh, it just says a little bit about who I am, where I came from, my history. Um, part of my uh, part of this here is also my story. Uh, this is being uh, being downsized in, in corporate America, and then this is when I wrote my I talk about my, when I wrote my fourth book, and that's how I formed the Optimal Performance Academy was because of that fourth book. 
And then I just share a, a little bit about what I do. Now, this bio could be something is one of the things that you could be sending to uh, uh, to people that, that are going to be booking you on their stages. Now, I would also say this, that recently in the last month or so, I've been lo looking at uh, being on a whole bunch of different people's podcasts. And because of that, they're usually going to ask me, can you see me your headshot as well as your bio? I send them this document right here. So I don't have to go and write something and and, and send it to, to that podcast. I, was, I already have it pre-written. So this this is a very, a very, very common. So as an example, I'm going to open up my Microsoft Outlook and go to my uh, sent folder. And um, right there. I sent my bio. I mean, so you see, the, the second to last email that I sent today was via yeah, this guy's podcast, my bio and my headshot. So you, you definitely want to have this thing ready. Now, again, in, in the bio, you're going to be, it should be under like 300 words. Uh, for, this is the long form bio. You also want to keep it as one page. As you can see right here is 365 words and page one of one. So this is a, a, only a one page uh, document. Now, there's also the short form, a short form bio where you, in those cases, those are going to be like 100 words or less. So what you do here is you get this and then just make it a lot more concise, a, a lot more uh, deliberate. This one was the, was the most deliberately uh, to be uh, a little bit wordy. Now, you also uh, in that bio, you'd be talking about who you are, what you do, and then a brief history of, of about what you did. And uh, and also you want to make sure you have your contact information in there as well. So right there, we've got my name, my my uh, my business phone number, my web, my email. Schedule, uh, this is the, to schedule a meeting if they want to do a one on one. And then this is my website. So, the, 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 so that's all of my contact information. So right now with that uh, speaker host, or podcast host, or whomever, they can go back and, and, and research a little bit about me before, say, the, the interview or, or before trying to book a call and say, hey, this is something that we could actually do together. So that is uh, that is the first thing that you want to create is your is going to be your uh, your bio. So, again, we talked about this was a short form. Long form. The next thing that you're going to be uh, wanting to do, and we're probably going to be spending a lot of time on this part here, is going to be what is known as your speaker one sheet. Now, that's what I've always called it, but it can be called something else. Some people may call it the, the one sheet, and other people may call it the, the speaker press kit. They all mean the same thing. They're, they're just used interchange, interchangeably. So if you're doing your speaker one sheet and somebody asks you for your speak, speaker press kit, they all mean the same thing. Now, a speaker press kit is going to have a lot more information on it. It's also going to be a lot more colorful. Now, between the two of y'all, between Gina and, and, and Jason, do y'all do you know what your company colors are? If you have one, two, or three colors, then then do you know the hexadecimal code for uh, for the, for those uh, for your uh, for your colors? I do. Say yes, if you do. Good, yeah. Jason. No, I was a graphic designer in a previous life, so yeah. Okay, so when I say hexadecimal, most people like you know, just gloss over, like I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go on a, a little a tangent for that one as well. Now, in uh, just to give you a, 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 a definition of uh, of a hexadecimal, we know that when we talk about binary, you, we have only two characters in that, right? Is it zero or a one? In decimal, we have ten characters. These are uh, zero through nine. Or one, um, or or one through zero. Okay, so it's just a, 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 a decimal. Just means like digit. Hexadecimal is a little bit different. It, it has sixteen characters in it. What, what, so therefore, you're going to have zero through nine and a through f. Now. 
once you uh, once you start deciding what your co colors are going to be, you want to um, um, that's symbol. Uh, you want to kind of you want to memorize. Um, what how am I spelling that? Uh, you 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 want to memorize your, your your colors. As an example, my on my website, I use purple, and I also use gold. Those are my company colors. I know uh, and, and for a fact that my my purple is um, uh, what is it again? Uh, it's a four two six b nine. I know that. I, I know that is my 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 hexadecimal color for that, and gold is going to be, and I always called it badass because it is BB AD five five. So so those are my two colors. And once you start deciding on your colors, then you want to make sure you have you know what what hue that is, how dark it's going to be, how light it's going to be. You can't just say red. Red has way too many uh, other uh, uh, values that you can get. Now, there's two different ways uh, that I uh, would suggest getting your hexadecimal color. Uh, number one is if you use uh, Microsoft Chrome, there is this thing right here, one of the, a Chrome extension that is known as uh, the, the Color Pick Eyedropper. So let's go to, um, let's just do a Google search on um, outdoors. Let's say you want to go with, like, say, a blue and green. And let's go I, I go with this image right there. So I can go ahead and click on this a color big eyedropper. And now I can go through here like that color blue in the sky is that color is 1C67A1. Do you, do you see that? Yeah. Okay. Or that color green is uh, A9A25D. Those, that's one way that you can get your, um, your colors. If you don't have uh, the color picker, I'm gonna hit escape. Another way that you can do it, uh, and this is one that's not quite as um, uh, as as long. I do f please forgive me. I, I just cleared my cache, so I'm, uh, some of these websites are not going to come up uh, quickly. Okay, got it. I have to I have to verify that information. Okay. That's one thing, when, when you clear your cache, it, <laughs> it really doesn't help much. Uh, so just go ahead and um, and this is, I'm gonna do a, a new presentation. And let's say you want to go with the, uh, let's say you want to go with the a color of uh, blue. So I can go here and I can I go to you know, the, any colors, go down here where it says, I want to go, go with blue. And you will see right there, uh, hashtag FFFF, that's gonna be white and all blacks is, is hashtag zero, zero, zero. So you can go to this, uh, the blue here and you'll get the color code there as well. So I can say, I can say no, I, that one's a little bit too dark. Let me go here, maybe there. Uh, and I'm going, I'm looking here as what I'm, I'm wanting. Like, well, maybe that's a little bit too much. I'm gonna go to a lighter blue. So oh, that's perfect. That's hashtag 35698F. So that's how you get, that's, those are two different ways for you can, for you to pick your colors. I would suggest you write these down, put them on a sticky note. I've got one on one of my whiteboards up here, just in case I happen to forget. So th this, th these are the ways that you get your colors. Now, when you're creating your speaker one sheet, uh, it is, in my opinion, it is best if you're going to be using your company, your corporate colors. So it's an example of a speaker one sheet, I will show you mine. And then I will show you basically how to go ahead and get it. So go back here. So it's a, I got uh, three speaker one sheets uh, right there. So I'm going to go with that one, click on that one, and click on that one. And they should load in a second. So so this is this is one of my older. This first one here is one of my older speaker one sheets. This one was actually created by a a, a program I bought several years ago. Um, that was actually a PowerPoint. Uh, th this was uh, this was created using PowerPoint. 
Now on here, you'll see on a speaker one sheet, my, again, my colors are gold and purple. Uh, so I've got uh, the purple uh, right there. Um, if, um, uh, so the purple is right there. And then whenever you're uh, doing your speaker one sheet, you also want to have a good picture of yourself. So that picture, uh, I have some good website links I use for color information if you like, uh, if you want to, please. And, and Jason always said yes as well. So you want to have uh, on your speaker once you, you do want it to be colorful. Uh, you, have, you, you want your name up there. You're also going to be, you know, basically who, you know, what it is that you do. And then I, I'm also saying uh, connect with me on social media. My phone number and, and email is right there. That's my personal phone number, not my business phone number. And then at least uh, two or three talks that you that you can that, that you can give, as well as now a short bio. This is going to be a one or two paragraph. A short bio. It's not going to be the extensive one that you wrote uh, as, as a separate bio. And then you also want to make sure that you, uh, if you have any additional information over here on the right hand side, and then try to have at least one uh, uh, one testimonial. Uh, the thing is, if you don't have testimonials yet, at least talk to somebody that you've kind of worked with before to at least get your first testimonial, and then you can build um, your. Uh, then, then after you uh, have given some talks, you know, or done some work with somebody, and then you know, have them give that testimonial. This testimonial here by Jen Lucas actually is uh, is off the back cover of my second book. Okay, so this is this is a true testimonial. Uh, the reason I used her because I, I liked it, and sh and even though I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, she's actually from uh, uh, Sydney, Australia. So I, I kind of liked having an international testimonial. Another speaker one sheet that these are actually more recent ones, um, and all of these I've actually created in Canva, and I, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a moment. So that's one of my uh, t that's one of my things. I, I'm deviating from my colors only because I'm wearing a purple shirt and the, and a purple background. It actually uh, I, I blended in with the background. And then here's another speaker one sheet that I use. You can see here, I'm using my corporate colors. I'm wearing a blue shirt in this particular case. And then now I don't, uh, I don't blend in with my, I, I don't, uh, you know, uh, I, I, you can differentiate myself from my background. You can also see in here, I have four different talks that I, uh, that I uh, talk on and you'll have a, a catchy title and then a one or two sentence uh, description of what that talk is all about. Going back over here to the right-hand side, uh, I, I'm still using the same Jen Lucas uh, uh, testimonial that, uh, there that I used on the first one. And let me go to the second one here. Um, and, and I'm using the same one here as well. So you definitely want to have a, a testimonial. Now, also, you also want to have a call to action. Here's my contact information on the bottom. Here is my, uh, my email. And then instead of having the Zoom link, I actually created a QR code uh, in order to go ahead and um, uh, have them just uh, scan it on their phone to actually schedule the meeting. Uh, they, they, obviously, they can always email me or they can always uh, call me. Now, one thing about uh, QR codes, there's uh, uh, Canva does it for free. There are other uh, PDF uh, creation websites out there as well. Um, the thing is, you will see that on the QR code, you have these three boxes. Now, the, those three boxes are, are, are basically just to get alignment. So the three boxes could be, uh, I, I could rotate this image. And it, and, it, and it will actually still work. I'm going to even rotate it upside down and, and it will still work. So on a QR code, it doesn't matter which direction that you're, uh, that these three boxes are. This is the default format, but, but the phone, your phone camera is intelligent enough to flip it if you're looking at it from a different angle. So one of the things that COVID did was with the QR codes, it made a, a lot of restaurants so get rid of their menus or at least uh, put them in limited supply. And, and they would give you a card or the QR code was actually on uh, on a piece of tape that was um, uh, taped to, uh, to the top of the table. And that's again, that, so if I was sitting across from you and it was in the middle of the table, I, can, I, I don't have to turn my phone upside down to, uh, to scan that code. So I just want to make sure that you're, or de you guys are definitely aware of that. Now, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the creating of one of these speaker one sheets, because this is probably the one of the biggest things I wanted to talk about today. Um, now, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to um, um, let's just go ahead and, and look at uh, other examples of, of speaker one sheets. Go there and then I'll go to images. 
and the, and these are ones that you can these are templates that you can buy or you can just you know you're looking at some of these other ones like oh I, I like hers let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick let me see if i can blow it up and this is going to okay how to how to create i uh, create a, a speaker one sheet so i'm just going to scroll down and so as you can see for her, she's got a little bit of information there. She's got her uh, name up top, you know, you know, what she calls herself, a picture of, her, of herself, uh, three topics that she talks about. Uh, she's uh, she's also talking about her credibility as to where she was, uh, where she's been seen before, as, as well as a, a testimonial and then all of her contact information. And then she's got her logo in the lower right hand corner. So you can you know you can either buy into one of these programs or you can actually create your own speaker one sheet on Canva itself, and it's actually fairly easy. Um, now, uh, between the two of you, um, do you do either one of you have a professional photo of yourself? At least one or two professional photos of yourself, or at least a good photo if it's not professional one. Yeah, I need to get one. So, so I'm going to show you something that you can do uh, uh, with a with one of your photos. And this is, again, this is all going to be for free. So I'm going to, uh, this is something that Canva does do, but it's one of their paid features. So if you have a free account, this won't work. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do, we're going to, we're going to assume you've got a good photo of you and it's only you in the picture. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to a, to a website known as uh, remove.bg. Does, does, has anybody heard of this website before? No. I have done, yeah. You have, uh, Gina? Yeah, I've heard of it, yeah. I think I used okay. it once, but I don't remember. I think I have used it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just get a, a random picture of myself. So I'm going to go to my pictures, um, personal pics, pics of me, uh, professional pics. And I've done this several times. So you, you've probably seen that image on my speaker one sheet and the one with me in the blue shirt leaning forward is, is that one there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this going to get the, I'll, I'll get this photo. I'm going to get this photo and I'm going to move it over uh, over here i'm used to, i'm used to working with two screens so it's a, so i'm going to get this photo and, and move it over okay so it's got the gray background you saw how quick it was so i'm going to go ahead and download that and downloads now appear with this little uh, thing about, uh, in, in the top right and they used to go in the bottom left but not. so i'm just going to drag i'm going to get the photo and just drag it uh, uh to my desktop so it's right there so right now, if I was in Canva and I wanted to put my photo uh, inside of here, you will see the, the, the blue space. So if I was to go and change the background to gold, you will see me uh, sitting there right there. So this is a great, uh, a great tool that you can use and is extremely powerful whenever you guys are trying to uh, create your speaker one sheet. So going back to my speaker one sheet, and I open that back up. You see, the, 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 I've removed the background uh, in, in these particular cases. Sorry, okay. Kevin, can you just say yeah. again what you said about paid versus free Canva um, accounts, what you can and can't do? I miss, I kind of missed that. Okay, sure. Um, so uh, somebody told me that Canva could do the same thing. So it, I will show you that it cannot. So let me go ahead and uh, open oh, up gotcha. a new presentation. So if you have a, a, a paid version of, of Canva, let's go ahead and uh, let me just change the background to a different color. It doesn't really matter what the color is. So I'm going to change the purple. I'm going to go to my uploads. And um, let's go ahead and use that guy. So if I wanted to do this on Canva, which I can, but if I, I would have to uh, click on the photo, go under edit photo, and then do the background re remover, the BG remover. You see it has a, it has a little crown there. But that means it's, oh, a, it's, a, gotcha. it's a, pr a premium feature. If I click on it, you will see, try it free for, th uh, for 30 days. So I don't have the, I, I don't have the Canva Pro, but if you did, then you don't have to worry about remove.bg. 
uh, because yeah. it, uh, because uh, Canva already uh, would do it for you. Yeah, I don't have the pro version either. Okay, thanks thanks for clearing that up. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. Hey, that's that's why I really wanted to show this one because it is just just so powerful. I mean, I love love just how 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 strong that is there. Anyway, let's go ahead and, and, and build a speaker one sheet. Now, let me uh, ask you guys, what are the ones that I'm going through right now? And let me close her out. Uh, which one of these do you kind of like? Do you like this this one up here? That I want to go with this one right here. Okay. If I can, if I can get it big enough, I'm I'm going to take a look at it. And it's probably slow because of the zoom as well as the fathom is running. Okay. Okay, speaker one sheet. So so I kind of like that. Uh, I'm going to assume he's not standing uh, in the sky in, uh, in front of this, whatever this thing is in the background, or, you know, whichever city that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to another free website. This one is known uh, as an Unsplash. Okay. Now there's four websites that do this. Um, because uh, if we're building a, a a a page or a speaker one sheet with an image in the background, we have to go and get that other image. Now you, you saw from my speaker one sheets, I did not do that, but let's assume that you that you did want to do that. Unsplash is is a, one of those um, uh, sites where you can actually use a, an image on here without worrying about any kind of copyright infringement. This is uh, this is known as a um, I forget what it's called. Um, it is uh, a ro royalty free images. Now I don't know how many of y'all have heard of, of of Unsplash. You can you can search for basically anything. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, so let me say I want to get a picture of, of Raleigh. And um, let's see here. Let's go back to that night picture. So I'm going to go ahead and and click on on that picture, and then I'm going to hit hit the download. The image uh, went up here to the top right. So I'm going to get it. And I'm going to scroll it to the uh, to my desktop. And now I'm going to go back to Canva. <clears throat> Actually, when you're doing a speaker one sheet, you need to make it in, in an eight, eight and a half by 11 uh, format. It has to be like a regular sheet of paper. And we'll, I'm going to get that uh, photo. I can, I'm going to keep it as is. I'm going to stretch it. This could just make it bigger. I don't want to cover the top of that building. Maybe that's too big. So I'm, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. And then I'm going to uh, uh, draw, uh, bring that picture down. So again, I'm I'm pretty much I'm copying what that other guy uh, what that other guy said. Um, then I all of this now is just all about being creative. Is uh, he had he had his name in there, so I'm going to put my name in there. And then he had a back he had his name on a background. In this case, it looks like a a rhombus of some sort. So I can now uh, go over here to where it says elements. And pick whatever element that I want to use. Um, I'm going. I'm just going to use a, a, the standard square, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in the background. I'm going to make it a, a little bit smaller. And this is getting a little difficult, so because I'm only at 27% zoom, so let me zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and, and move it. And I, I want to keep that the same size, so I may have to make this longer. Then I'm going to go just put my name uh, inside there. And he had his as, um, okay, We he put his, his second name on the second row. And I'm, I'm not going to get too worried about that because I'd rather this 
Um, so as you can see, I'm, I'm just dragging in and out it's just so that it will fit the name. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and move it to the left. And I, I, I don't like the fact that the city is getting completely cut off. So I'm going to go to the three dots and go to this where there's a checkerboard here, here is for transparency. And then I, I usually I like go down, down like 60 or 70. If I go lighter and go lighter and then go back to the name, control A, and just go with a different color. And uh, so as you can see, so if you're using Canva for your design, and I, and I know this is probably uh, pretty much elementary to Gina if she was a designer before, but for uh, but for uh, Jason, this is where you're going to be starting to put uh, your content, all your contact information. So he had mentor, speaker, author. And so I'm going to put another box in here. Since my colors are uh, gold and purple, So I'm still I'm going to click on the box and just go with a gold or uh, with purple. Now, whenever you are working with uh, uh, with um, a Canva, you can have I think either two or three uh, of your brand colors. So I can go here. I can edit this. I can add another one. Let's say I wanted to add red, and then if I try to add a fourth one or a th yeah, fourth one, you see that little crown just appeared. So you can have up to three colors. Um, as you, as part of your brand kit, so that keeps things a lot easier um, once you once you decide what your colors are. And then on here, I just add a text field. He said, "Mentor, speaker, author," and I, I'm basically I'm the same thing. So put that in there. This is gonna be too big. I'm gonna make the dot twenty four. Control A. Type. In the center, control A again, I'm going to make it white. So as you can as, as you can see, you can. I'm not going to do a, a build a whole a speaker one sheet because it's just, it will take the rest of the hour. Um, but I, as you can see, it, it is, I mean, once you get, you start getting used to this, you can start building your own speaker one sheet. Now on the speaker one sheet, did, did I want to discuss what was on the speaker one sheet? Yeah. Okay. So, you, so again, you got your topics, you got your praise, you got everything else. So that's, that's, so that is how you're going to be uh, building your speaker one sheet by doing it on here. Um, I, I, I mean, I know you can do it on, in word. I prefer it on here just because I have a lot more artistic control uh, over it. Um, so we've got your brief bio, we've got your call to actions. We've got your, uh, now going back to mine, if I, if I was charging for this, I may have another version where I say, uh, approving your nine step, uh, client life cycle journey. I may say, um, prices starting at $2,000 price, you know, you, you can put your prices on here, but remember, sometimes you're going to be speaking at a free event. Sometimes you're going to be uh, looking for somebody to, uh, hire you as a corporate trainer. So you, you may, well, you may have two versions. Uh, of this form now um so, 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 so and i would say you know uh, on your computer just make sure that you identify which one is which so that whenever you you're going to be sending it to somebody that you're actually going to be sending it to the right person now another thing uh, that you want to uh, to have is something known as that as an intro so that's going to be the next thing that we talk about is an intro now, an, an intro is something that you're not going to be sending to, uh, to the uh, to the host until uh, you have already been booked. OK, an intro is going to be essentially how the, they are going to introduce you to uh, on the stage. That So for an example, let me go back to my uh, here's the intro that I wrote just recently um, for a, an event that I was uh, a speaker at.
on the wrong side. You belong here. Uh, so this was this was my intro. Now, whenever you're writing an intro, the first sentence either needs to be like a quote, needs to be a statistic, or needs to be some kind of hook. Now, a quote and a and a statistic is 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 a form of hook. It's basically it's going to draw their attention in. It's going to be what you know, whatever it is that um, that is going to grab the attention of the audience. Now, just like your speaker one sheet, you know, I didn't mention this, just like your speaker one sheet, your intro also, or, or both need to be written in third person. So whenever you're writing uh, in third person, it's always going to be he's or she's. Okay. So, and you also see uh, when, uh, 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 my intro, I, I, I never say anything about my name until the very end. Because we're we're building anticipation. I don't say you you will see up here. I, there's no my mention of my name is nowhere uh, nowhere near. It's not until the very end. And I always started off. I used to start my mind off as our next speaker. Now, if you're the only speaker, then you may give them an intro that's without the word next in it. Um, so you want to say a little bit about yourself, and then uh, you know a, a brief bio uh, as to what you're going to, uh, who you are. And then I gave a talk called Your Face is Your Brand. It was a five-minute talk uh, at, a, at this event. And then, of course, uh, who I am to, to give uh, give myself uh, uh, credibility. And then here's my name. And I come out on my name. Now, also, whenever you have an, whenever you write an intro, you always want to make sure that it is in at least an 18 font. Okay. The reason being, you never know if somebody's going to be reading your intro actually forgot the reading glasses. So you want to make sure that it's easily readable. Also, when you uh, do an intro, whenever you create an intro and you send it uh, to the person, you always want to make sure that you print at least two copies and, and take it to the event yourself. Because there's 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 always the chance that the uh, that the host actually um, lo lost your intro. So you always want to have at least one or two copies um, uh, uh, as a backup. I always like to bring two copies minimum is because what if they lose the second copy? Because <laughs> you give it to them a half hour before the event, they're reading they're re reading your intro and then they, they laid it down and then they forgot where they laid it down. So you still have a, a backup for the backup. Another thing is whenever you give, uh, whenever you, you speak to the person, if you've got any words uh, in your intro that might be difficult to say, like performance is, is not, it's probably the most difficult word out of the whole intro. But if you've got something in there, um, like say the, 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 pronounci the pronunciation of your name, um, you may want to say, you want to make sure that they are actually saying it correctly. Like say for Gina up there, I see her name is Longo, or, or I'm assuming it's, it's pronounced Longo. Um, Look, it's pronounced just like it's spelled. Amazing, long go. <laughs> okay. So, it's, but the thing is, if somebody has a last name, like say they ends with, say it's a Chinese person, and their last name ends in X U, you may like that. Is that Su? I mean, you want to make sure that you that you don't butcher their name, um, or, or any other difficult words. Let's say if you're giving a technical talk and you've got the word hexadecimal in there, you want to make sure that they may know what that word is, uh, because you don't want them stumbling uh, uh, through your intro. Now the intro, let me see what else I had on there. The, yeah, the intro again is going to be written in third person, and um, and and this you will see that it's only a, a few sentences long because you don't want to be giving a, a you know a five minute in intro. The next thing that you want to that you may want to have also in part of your uh, speaker uh, media kit is going to be uh, uh, upcoming events or course um, course flyers. Okay, so some of these you, you may want to give to, uh, to them as well, especially if you're going to be talking about, hey, I'm going to be talking about, say, my my workshop that's coming up this Saturday, uh, the Business Kickstarter workshop. I may be talking about, hey, I'm going to be uh, talking about this, and I give them a copy of that as well. Now, just like the speaker one sheet, I I create all of my flyers uh, using uh, using Canva. So if I go over here to the top left and go on uh, my course flyers, here's our here's our a lot of the flyers that I have. Here is my workshop that's coming up this Saturday. And uh, this one here, let me close this so I can see everything. It, I, I designed all of this on Canva, okay? The only thing that's on here that's not, the only thing that I, I did not include on here because I actually, I printed a, a, a thousand of these is I, I did not put a date on here. 
because I didn't want to uh, uh, cause it to be uh, uh, be out of date. And I just noticed an error. But um, so uh, so on, on the flyer here, I've got my um, my logo. I've got in the name of my company, my tagline, and then you know what it is that, that, that I'm promoting. So these are other things that you may want to include as well. Now, there is a gentleman out there. His name is uh, Bill Walsh. Now, uh, I know... Uh, Jason stepped away. Have you, Gina, have you heard of Bill Walsh? Sorry. Yeah, I couldn't. I had something covering the um, mute button. You see the guy from The Secret? Remember that? Bill Walsh, no, the same guy? guy um, he's a rainmaker. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, I don't know. There's another another word to that, but no, he's, he's not from The Secret. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. There, there was a guy a, named Bill Walsh from The Secret. Uh, Bill actually, Bill Walsh has a program that was that was uh, uh, he he played on the words of from the secret. He's got ah. a program called uh, The Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. But uh, but with him, uh, he, he's he's a master at uh, creating course flyers. Let me show. I get something real quick. Can I show you? I wasn't prepared to, to do this, so I'm going to show you some of the stuff he he has, and he and even when he, he when he has events, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen so I can show some of the stuff to you. Um, so uh, Rainmaker Summit, that's 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 his program, and what he gives out as for an example is, are you uh, are you ready for uh, uh, an upcoming event? And then he's got his entire. 2020 schedule uh, right there uh, on the back. And he also was giving out um, uh, Power to Me International stuff that's going to be on a three uh, a threefold flyer. He's got uh, other uh, cards. I mean, he's just, he's got uh, little cards like this as well. Mm -hmm. So you, you, whenever you're, you, you're putting together your speaker one kit and you are creating some additional flyers and stuff like that, you may want to also include those into uh, into that kit as well. Wow. Now, one of the things I would suggest yeah. is if you're, um, because it can get a little, a little expensive, if you're giving out, let's say, uh, more, you know, a different size things, I would also possibly see by um, going to uh, Vistaprint or Canva or wherever and and create folders as well. So you can you can insert things out into there, uh, into there. Um, and then, of course, then you can put your business card in there as well. So that's, I mean, that's that as far as as far as the flyers and stuff goes, we talked about the intro. So there's one more, one of, there's a couple more things I want to talk about before we wrap this up or open up for more, even more questions. So I'm going to go ahead and share my, let's go back to sharing my screen. Screen one. <clears throat> then hide. Okay. So whenever you're, whenever you're actually going to be speaking, one of the things I strongly suggest uh, that you do, I don't need this anymore, um, is to actually have, um, let me see here. Is it always, uh, whenever you can, always record yourself, okay? These are a few of the talks I, 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 that I've given. Uh, this was uh, a, a talk at uh, at an event. Maybe twenty or thirty people were there. This was an, uh, another talk at a similar event. Uh, it looked like it might be the same thing. Oh, that, that was feedback. I, I gave the talk, and then a half hour later, they gave feedback. So I, th those were recorded as two separate videos. And I was I was say always record yourself. If you're ever going to be on stage, uh, you definitely want to record yourself. Now, one one thing that I've um, noticed uh, uh, recently is that, uh, or, or let me rephrase that, technology has definitely uh, has uh, increased over the, the last few years as far as equipment is concerned. So I would say that, but I would assume both of you guys have uh, cell phones and those cell phones are uh, the, the pixels uh, on the cell phone are, are much stronger than they were say even like four or five years ago. So the, the quality of the video is, is going to be good. Now, th there are a few things that, that I'm going to recommend that you that that you purchase uh, as uh, when when you actually become a speaker. The first thing, obviously, is going to be a um, is a tripod. 
So you want to make sure that your cell phone will fit in the tripod and always record your uh, yeah, everything in landscape mode because your computer is landscape. YouTube is landscape. So I always record everything in landscape mode. If you're recording a TikTok or an Instagram uh, uh, post, then yes, you want, you want to be in portrait mode. But for the most part, everywhere else, you're going to be in landscape mode. So just be aware of that. Also, if you're going to be recording yourself from stage, you probably want to use the, the, the rear facing camera. The, the rear facing camera is usually a lot better than the, the front facing camera. <laughs> so what you want to do then is before you go up on stage, you make sure that you um, know how tall you are and make sure you, you adjust for that. If you've got to zoom in, please go ahead and zoom in as well. A tripod can be, can be purchased on, on Amazon uh, fairly inexpensively. Um, let me just go to Amazon. And there's two types of tripods that you uh, that you may want to purchase. One is going to be your standard, you know, you know, five to six foot uh, a tripod. This has a bag with it because this one's about a, a twenty dollars. This one's a, a little bit um, uh, a bigger one. It's, it's taller, but the thing is, you you would just uh, connect with a uh, a phone uh, holder that you can that, that screws on top of the tripod, and then you just put your cell phone in, inside that phone holder. Another tri uh, kind of tripod that you can uh, that you can get. That's the one that you saw when I was. Uh, uh, I was speaking for that Smarty Talk, or what's called a mini tripod. Um, uh, mini tripods, uh, they can fold. They're, they're using something like this. They, the legs don't extend further than, than that. And they're all, basically, there's only one height. They're only like eight or 10 inches off the ground. Again, you can get these like $15 or $23. Um, the second thing I would recommend, especially if you're going to be wearing a dark uh, top, is a is a wireless lavalier uh, microphone. Now I I, I bought uh, one of these uh, just recently, uh, just a few months ago, and uh, essentially what happens with this this will uh, will clip to your lapel, and then it, uh, the the microphones these microphones will actually connect to this wirelessly, and then this is a USB C connection that will plug right into your phone. Uh, I absolutely love this. And let me see if I remember where I put that video. Okay. okay. Let me go. I'm going to share my sound. Um, allow share sound. Okay. And I'd like for you guys to let me know what you think of this. I'm going to play this video here. I'm wearing the lavalier microphone on my blue shirt, and I'm about 60 foot away, 60 feet away from the camera. Hello, this is uh, Kevin Dunlap, and I want to tell you a little bit more about how these wireless microphones work. As you can see, you can be a very few feet. Uh, can y'all hear that? Or did y'all hear that? Yep. Yeah, it sounded good. It sounded good. So, because because right here the microphone is is right there just below just below my uh, at the top of my collar, but I'm standing uh, that distance away outside. So I wanted to do this as a test um, uh, for this microphone. Now, when when I bought mine, mine did not fit uh, uh, into my phone. This USB C could not fit into my phone because my uh, my phone was uh, had its case on. So this one would require for me to take the case off. So what I ended up doing was not only did I buy that microphone, you see, I got it on April twenty sixth. I also bought a USB C extender. So in this case, it came with three. Obviously, I only need one of them, so I got two as backup. And then I uh, and then and then I use this. Then it connects it can, connects directly into my phone. Now another thing that I also did, and I don't have an example of this, is if you know somebody that has a Crown Royal bag or uh, or if you've got a sunglasses bag, I actually carry. And I was just showing this up to the camera. Everything uh, in a sunglasses bag. So the, this is the, the device, and then I've got the USB cord in here, and then I've got the power cords in here as well. So I can plug it into a wall. 
So, so that way, that way I don't lose this thing because because uh, this thing cannot fit inside uh, the, the the bag or in, inside the box here. So that so you definitely want to make sure that you can rec uh, uh, record that. If I were to click on this one here, and I will scroll down just uh, just a touch. Is 164 feet of a range, so you can very easily be recording from the back of a crowded room and still get uh, excellent uh, quality uh, as a recording. So, even though they, you may be speaking with a regular house mic, uh, I've I've now learned uh, you know, with these that um, uh, you know, having you know having a distance and being able to, uh, to do this and, and have it come in. Uh, uh, very clear is going to be for a great uh, video later on when you're showing when you're uh, creating a say a uh, a demo video, and you're going to also see from here you're going to you, you can record like say you're you're doing a podcast. She's wearing one mic, she's wearing the, the second mic, and then the USB connection is right there into the phone. So you're gonna you're gonna actually even have two people talking uh, with uh, at, at basically at the same time. Let's see here. Um, now, also, whenever you uh, do the, the uh, a talk, you you definitely want to not, not only record it, but you also may, may also want to make a uh, post these on YouTube uh, with a back link going to your website. Now, I was told on a call that I was on a few days ago that YouTube is removing. He said he, YouTube is removing backlinks to your website, and so right before this call, I went ahead and wanted to do a little bit of research, starting. Starting uh, August 31st, 2023, links in YouTube shorts, uh, comments, and descriptions will become unclickable. Now, that scared me a little bit because, first of all, I, I've not really heard of YouTube shorts before, but uh, it appears this is only going to be happening in YouTube shorts. The YouTube shorts are, are basically videos that you create that are one minute or less. Uh, and, I, and I was doing research as to... Um, uh, is it going to be doing with right, regular YouTube videos? And, I, and I've not found anything yet. So I would say if you can um, still do the um, the backlink to your uh, to, uh, to your website, I would strongly suggest you do that. And speaking of which, you will also uh, uh, want to have a, a a professional website. Now that website could be a, a website dedicated to your speaking, or it could be just one page on, on your website. So if I were to go to Optimal Form, uh, Forms Academy, I I could have a a a, a link somewhere up here that goes to let's just say my my about page was my speaking uh, page, and you just have uh, going to your website. Like in this case, it would be optimalformsacademy.org forward slash about, and you put that all of in all your bios and uh, and uh, speaker one sheets. Now. That is getting close to it. Uh, does anybody have any questions so far? Um, about your, your my speaking page, my, my speaking. website is sorry. I've got feedback. Why am I hearing myself? Oh, um, let me let me turn off the the sharing of sound. It might be okay. Yeah, that's probably what I'm hearing. Okay. Okay. So, would you? I don't have a speaker page specifically on my website yet. It's on my list of things to do, but would you have your speaker one sheets available to be downloaded from your website? Or is that something you would only save to send specifically to someone to whom you're applying to speak? Like you wouldn't just have it downloadable so they can look at it. What do you recommend? I would recommend having it on your website. Uh, like one of the things I, I'm, as you saw up here, I, I've got my course flyers. And let's say I was going to be talking about the, uh, lead magnet generator one of my programs called lead magnet generator i've not done this yet i one of the things i i could do is i could actually go to my website go to curriculum go to all all available classes actually i don't need to go through all of that i'm just going to go to the page itself because i i know where it is <laughs> so if i were to go to a lead magnet generator um, I, I could have a downloadable flyer here. I don't, but I, I could. And I would probably suggest that you do have it. Uh, I okay. do have one. The reason I don't have one on here is because I'm already giving all that information. All that information is here, but it'd probably be good to have it in case somebody wanted to print it out and, and take it with them without having to worry about this video uh, you know, being printed. Okay. 
or the image up for the uh, when they print things out. But yes, I would definitely have one. Okay, uh, thanks. And if you've got more than one talk, um, then uh, you may have uh, a speaker one sheet. Uh, you will say on, on your website, it's, uh, this is my speaker one sheet for when I talk to uh, realtors. This is my speaker one sheet when I talk to whatever your different uh, courses are going to be. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I've got one sort of signature talk for corporate and then one that's for essentially women's kind of groups. Yeah, definitely. Could you be talking on probably on different topics? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, it should be the same topic. I mean, when, when I when I go up here and um, and talk about who do we work with, a realtors, solo entrepreneurs, and entrepreneurs, and coaches and consultants, all three of those pages are almost identical because <laughs> it's, it's you know, what a realtor goes through is an, a realtor is an entrepreneur. So it's like you know, it's now I just say, well, this is just I just start I just use more uh, real real estate uh, lingo here than I would here. <laughs> Yeah, for my both of mine are on leadership, but one is geared specifically toward how leadership training benefits a corporate bottom line, and the other one is leadership for women, sort of like women's empowerment. So the topic is the same. A lot of the content is identical, but the slant is a little bit different. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of doing a, a similar thing. Um, is that let me go to uh, webinars and workshops. I have two webinars that, that I give. I'm giving one this Thursday at one o'clock Eastern. I've got one that's called Roadmap for Business Success. And I've got a second one that's the three massive mistakes entrepreneurs make that cause them to fail. In all honesty, the only thing that, that is different between these two, uh, between these two, is the first is the first slide. <laughs> Everything else is <laughs> exactly good. the same. Cool. Because this is a positive based or a pleasure based title. This is a pain based title. So I was like, you know, which one is going to draw in the uh, more people? Good beta test. It's a beta test, absolutely. Because <laughs> I was I was told that if, if somebody's working coming to you for the first time, you, if you have a course, pain based titles work a lot better than uh, pleasure based. And for uh, I guess for uh, for Jason, you will see the, these images here. These were all uh, downloaded off of uh, Unsplash. I throw in a box, and this is this is that sixty percent uh, transparency. Uh, this is, I think, an uh, eighty-two size font, and there's my logo. I, I mean, it takes me less than two minutes to create a course cover, and y'all already saw how I did that by doing the top half of the um, uh, of the speaker one sheet. Just have, have an image, put something on top of it, uh, change the transparency, put the words up there, and I throw in the logo. Done. <laughs> I know. So that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording.